Um, next up is Michelle Reed. Uh, she's the research manager at the Cancer Prevention Center. She holds a master's in public health from UBC and has used to work at the, uh, on provincial campaigns to promote cervical cancer screening and HPV immunization before joining the Cancer Prevention Center. And since 2010, uh, she's been involved in with Options for Sexual Health and the Canadian Federation for Sexual Health. So welcome, Michelle. Thank you. This is such a weird angle. Um, so as uh, was previously said, I came to cancer prevention through previously working in sexual health. So HPV is kind of my sweet spot because it's cancer and sex. Um, just to give you an overview, I feel like this is a really educated audience, but in case you don't know, HPV is a, an actually pretty large family of viruses that are connected. So there's over 100 kinds, and most of them are cause very transient infections, and you don't even know when you have an HPV infection, but some of them hang around and they can cause genital warts or they can lead to cancerous infections. Um, and it's extremely common, it's the most common STI probably, and uh, studies have found that HPV rates can exceed 60% in male populations just because it's so easy to get and when you don't know you have it, it's very easy to transmit. Um, despite how common it is, according to a fairly recent survey, only about a quarter of men knew that HPV could cause cancer and only 23% uh, knew it could cause oral cancers. Hopefully those rates are increasing. Um, among men, HPV causes 90% of anal cancers, about half of penile cancers, and a quarter of cancers of the oral cavity, and about a third of all cancers of the pharynx. Um, and these are pretty big numbers, but because of a lot of how HPV has been marketed, especially around the HPV vaccine, there's a very common perception that HPV is a women's cancer and that it's only about cervical cancer, and that has made some of this education quite difficult. And it does make a very big impact. So uh, as you see there, prior HPV infection increases risk of oral cancer by 32 times, which is huge. And oral cancers are very difficult to treat and have a very high mortality rate. And as has been said already, HPV and HIV are a bad combination. Um, so HIV can cause more persistent HPV infection. So while many people with healthy immune systems are able to clear the virus, if you have an autoimmune condition, it makes it easier for HPV to hang around in your body and cause other problems. And having HPV, it is suggested that it puts you at greater risk of acquiring HIV because it can cause lesions that makes it easier to get infected with HIV. Um, and among men who are HIV positive, the rates of anal cancer are higher than rates of cervical cancer anywhere in the world. That's a pretty dramatic number. Um, it's a very serious issue, and it really hasn't gotten the kind of attention that cervical cancer has gotten. So in 2007, um, Gardasil was recommended in Canada for girls aged 9 to 26. It's recommended before sexual contact, that's when it's most effective, but it can have protective effects at any point. And um, in 2010, PHAC did recommend that HPV vaccines be given to men as well, but at present only two provinces, PEI and Alberta, will cover the cost of the vaccine for males, and it's really expensive. It's the most one of the most expensive vaccines, so a full course of treatment is about $500. And that's a very significant barrier. Um, a couple of places do offer the vaccine at a reduced cost, but it's still a big chunk of change. Um, and Gardasil, or the HPV-4 vaccine, uh, protects against the two strains of HPV that cause most of anal cancers and also the ones that cause most of genital warts. So it's estimated that if there was good coverage of Gardasil, that 85% of anal cancer cases could be prevented. Um, vaccination is the best protection against HPV because unlike a lot of STIs, it's just caused by skin-to-skin -skin contact as opposed to contact with body fluids. So unlike with a condom where you can protect, protect against fluid exchange, um, 
skin to skin contact, you can come in contact with other parts of the body that aren't covered by the condom. And so it's, while condoms do probably provide some protection, it's not great. And um, as it said, early vaccination is better, but as long as you haven't been exposed to all the types of HPV that the vaccine prevents, it is effective still for men who have sexual experiences. So there are a lot of barriers to prevention of HPV, one being that it's so easy to transmit and so hard to detect, um, but also there are fewer educational resources and the general, I guess, perception of HPV still is that it's a women's disease, it causes cervical cancer. If you look at a lot of the educational materials promoted by organizations like Immunize BC, they really focus on cervical cancer and don't as well discuss the other types of cancer associated with HPV. Um, there's no HPV test available for men, I think. Yeah. It's not funded, yes. And um, there is something called an HPV DNA test, which is not really available in Canada, but in the US it's the new gold standard. And what it is, it's a swab that allows physicians to tell what type of HPV infection you have, if you have a kind of HPV that's not dangerous, or if you have what's called a high-risk kind that may lead to cancer. And an HPV DNA test allows people to be monitored if they have a high-risk infection. <laughs> that's not available in Canada, and it's not available for men. Um, anal paps are recommended for men who are at risk, which is generally men who have sex with men and men who are HIV positive. But there isn't a provincial program in place the way there is for cervical cancer. So with cervical cancer, there's a screening program that's been around since the 1960s. It's great, it's really well funded, it has very clear protocols. There's no equivalence for anal cancer or anal screening, so there are a few places where you can get anal paps done, but that's very limited. And um, a lot of places, even if you could get an anal pap, they wouldn't really know what to do with the results. So that's why they're not widely offered. And there are still very unclear policies around HPV vaccination. So while men can get the vaccine and they don't need a referral or a physician's note, not even all pharmacists know that. So Stacy actually told Carolyn and I about him sending volunteers to different pharmacies to ask for the HPV vaccine. And a lot of the pharmacists they talked to didn't think they could dispense it to them without a prescription. So that's a huge barrier. And finally, there's the cost, which is not insignificant. So, I don't have any really great things to end on, but it's a very common infection. It's got serious implications for health, for morbidity and mortality. Um, HPV vaccination is a really effective method of preventing a lot of this excess morbidity and mortality, but there are significant barriers to accessing it. And there's currently pretty inadequate policies in BC and across Canada for providing vaccination, education, and screening to men. So next steps, a little bit of optimism at the end. Um, there needs to be greater public awareness of HPV's impact on men, particularly men who have sex with men, and this is increasing all the time. Um, better training for physicians and pharmacists in addressing HPV. Improved anal screening guidelines and protocols. And increased access to HPV vaccination for men. So hopefully BC, like Alberta and PEI, will start providing that vaccine the same way they provide it for women. Thanks.